Hello and welcome to Rao's IES Focus Weekly. Today on 17th of March 2025, I'll be covering the current affairs of the past one week. Today I'll be covering the current affairs from the date of 10th of April 2025 till 16th of April 2025 and these are the four topics which have been popular in the news. So the first topic of our discussion would be the long range glide bomb tested successfully by DRDO, uh, code name Gaurav. We'll be talking about it and then we'll be discussing the real time lamp kit, a uh, very uh, a new innovation of providing real time uh, diagnosis of TB. We'll talk about this as well. Then we'll talk about the laser uh, you know, uh, DU system that has been developed. It is a de it's a system that has been developed by DRDO in order to detect and also neutralize drones and other incoming attacks. Right? India is one of the few countries to have developed this technology successfully. And then lastly, we'll talk about the European Space Agency's Biomass mission. This is the mission name Biomass and this has been scheduled to be launched on 29th of April this year and it is expected to provide us some insightful information regarding the impact of climate change on the global biomass or forest cover. Let's start with our discussion of the first topic. The first topic of our discussion is Glide. It is the long range glide bomb called Gaurav, right? Now, ISR, uh, sorry, uh, DRDO has successfully conducted a, a test on 8th and 10th of April of India's first long range glide a warhead or glide bomb known as Gaurav. This image that you see here, it is our very own Sukhoi Mark uh, Sukhoi MKI dropping the Gaurav payload and successfully conducting its test. Now what is so interesting about this kind of payload technology? This is basically a bomb that does not, that basically uses the natural inertia of a flying aircraft. And while moving towards its own target, it moves in, it glides through the air and reaches its, its required target. The advantage of this kind of a, 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 a kind of a, 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 a bomb is that because it does not use any major, you know, any major propulsion system, it does not re uh, release a lot of heat. And because it does not release a lot of heat, a lot of thermal trackers which may be used by enemy countries to neutralize such attacks they will be completely non-functional in capturing or in intercepting Gaurav and neutralizing it and on top of that this particular bomb has shown pinpoint accuracy of less than one meter up to a range of 100 kilometers that means if you drop it even outside the enemy territory even far from the enemy territory, even far from the borders and then drop it and then return. There's a high likelihood that the long range glide bomb would be able to glide through the enemy skies and eventually hit the target. This makes Gaurav a very capable, you know, bomb. Now this system uses a dual guidance system that combines the inertial navigation system. Inertial navigation system means inertia is basically what the bomb would have gained when it would have detached from the moving fighter aircraft. So when the fighter aircraft would have left the bomb, would have detached the bomb, it carries, the bomb carries the inertia gained in that body. And that inertia will keep on propelling this particular bomb further and uses satellite based GPS navigation system for pinpoint accuracy. So this makes Gaurav a very capable glide bomb and India is one of the few countries which have successfully tested. Now the warhead is still a conventional warhead of 1000 kgs that will be put on this glide bomb. Now don't be under this impression that other countries do not have it even uh, you know Pakistan is also in the pipeline of developing their own uh, glide bomb. Um, China already has uh, tested two of their glide bombs previously and of course USA, Russia already have developed this but this is uh, going to be an addition to the other developments or achievements made by DRDO so far. It has been indigenously designed and developed by DRDO's research center Imarat and Armament Research and Development Establishment based in Hyderabad. So this is what we have under the long range glide bomb Gaurav. Now let's move to the next topic of our discussion. The next topic is the indigenously developed new testing kit for TB. 
Now, guys, when it comes to TB, all of us know that WHO, under their Sustainable Development Goals, have set a target to eliminate TB by 2030. But India has shown a little more ambition, and we have planned to eliminate TB by 2025. So this is this is expected to be the year when India aspired to uh, completely eradicate TB. Now, when it comes to TB, its diagnosis becomes an important tool. Its right diagnosis, real-time diagnosis becomes an important tool of eradicating such a disease. So all of you guys, I believe you guys remember that when we used to have the COVID test conducted, you maybe remember that there was one test called RT-PCR. RT-PCR test, you would provide a sample once and then, you know, later on, uh, within a day or two, you'll get the reports for RT-PCR, right? So when and the other test was in both the cases they would take a swab of the, the the they will take a layer a smear of the 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 cuff and then sputum and then eventually they will do the testing the same kind of test is done for tb as well but if the diagnosis takes a long time then it becomes a huge challenge for us to isolate the patient and provide medication on a real time basis so guys here we have got an institution based in uh, you know, uh, in, uh, Triv in Trivandrum, Kerala, which has developed a kit. It's called the RT Lamp Test Kit, also known as the Real Time Lamp. Lamp means Loop Mediated Isothermal Am Amplification Test, right? And this particular test, it is same as the previous test only. Like there were previous tests like Gene Expert and TrueNAT, these are the tests that were already there for TB. But this particular test, is somewhat better than the previous test but it follows the same principle guys it is based on the same principle that a molecular testing kit which will be able to uh, uh, you know identify even a slight antigen of tb present in the sputum sample so they take the sputum sample that is sputum is basically the saliva and mucus combination that is no normally thrown out from the respiratory tract because of high cuff and such so they'll take the sputum sample and study the sputum sample and try to find out the mycobacterium tuberculosis the bacteria that causes tb if it is present or not it is capable of detecting the tb dna even when only 10 copy numbers were present per microliter of a sample so even if when there is a very small dose or small quantity of mycobacterium tuberculosis DNA in the, is in the sputum, it will still be able to detect it. So it is having far more sensitivity than previous test. And then guys, what makes this particular test somewhat better is because the result here comes on a real time. This is something that is very important, very essential for fighting against TB overall. So all of us understand that, Achha, interestingly, this particular test can be performed in the over in the already existing rt pcr test machines that are there for covid we can use the same rt pcr test machines but the only thing is that we have to we may have to change the temperature settings like rt pcr it was reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction it was a, a chain it was a reaction where they would they would identify the identify the um, you know uh, the nucleic acid of the virus and then they would amplify it okay so covid virus is an rna virus so they will first convert the rna into dna and then amplify the dna and then study if this virus is how how dangerous it is and what whether this virus is there or not the same concept is used in the rt lamp test also itself but the difference is that rt pcr test used to be performed in three different temperature levels Whereas the RT lamp test, we require only one temperature setting and that is the only little modification that is needs to be done. And the same RT PCR machines, which are now widely available in the across the country, they can easily be used to perform the RT lamp test as well. And here the result comes on a real time basis. If you talk about the number of TB cases, all of you know that India has the highest number of TB cases in the world. The TB notification touched a staggering 26.707 lakh cases in 2024, which has been the highest so far in India, right? And all of you understand TB, it's caused by a bacteria called mycobacterium tuberculosis. It mainly affects the lungs, but can also affect other organs, including the brain, spine, kidneys and such. But remember, more than 80% of the cases, it is the TBs of lungs, right? And remember, guys, as per the Sustainable Development Goals, we have to achieve a target of 90% reduction in TB deaths and 80% reduction in TB incidences as compared to 2015. This is the objective of the sustainable development program and sustainable development goals of united nations so who also adheres to this particular goal itself 
and this shows that India has taken one step in finding or in doing better diagnosis of TB cases. Now, in better diagnosis of TB. Now, the next uh, topic is related to the newly developed laser-based, you know, uh, systems or laser-based weapon system that can detect and eventually neutralize drones or incoming air attacks. So, DRDO has made one more testing, success, successful testing of the laser dew system. This is the name of the laser dew system that has been developed by DRDO and it was tested successfully. So, it's called the laser based directed energy weapon DEW -E laser based directed energy weapon. So, it's basically nothing but a laser laser based detection and a neutralization system which uses a laser to detect and then neutralize any incoming fixed wing aircraft missile or even a swarm of drones. So, if there is a drone attack moving towards India, if there is a missile or a, or a group of missile moving towards India or if there is a fixed wing aircraft moving towards India, uh, the laser the laser directed energy weapon can easily uh, uh, you know um, can easily detect an incoming attack and also neutralize it by firing a 30 kilowatt laser. So, it uses a 30 kilowatt laser which will identify the incoming attack and eventually neutralize it way before it touches India. It becomes a strong capability in protecting the territory against such kind of attacks. Guys, right now only USA, China and Russia has developed these weapon technology. India is just the fourth country to have developed this. It has been again indigenously designed and developed by DRDO's very own Center for High Energy System and Sciences, CHESS, based in Hyderabad. It can target aerial attacks, it can target aerial threats like drones, helicopters within a range of up to 5 kilometers. So, within 5 kilometers it can track down these attacks and can also neutralize them. It also includes electronic warfare capabilities like jamming signals, jamming communication signals and satellite signals in a region. So, you can understand it can be used not just for uh, protecting your own territory but also you know making the enemy handicapped by uh, cutting down all its communication signals and satellite networks. I hope all of you guys are able to get it. And then lastly, it can be used both for ground and naval operations. And this is what the, the directed energy weapon tested by DRDO is basically supposed to do. Now guys, the last topic of our discussion, it is the European Space Agency's biomass mission. Now, this is a proposed mission of European Space Agency. Basically, I should not call it proposed because the satellite is already built. It has already been transported to the location from where it is going to be launched. So, this is a one of a kind mission of European Space Agency. It is expected to, to be launched on 29th of April this, this year. And this is going to be the first ever mission. As the name suggests, you know, um, biomass mission. This is going to be the first ever mission of European Space Agency to measure the total biomass of the earth's forest and how climate change is impacting it. So guys, let me talk about this mission first, its basics and then we'll see what is the significance of knowing this. So guys, this mission is going, this particular satellite, this is the, um, you know, CGI image of this particular satellite. This is how the satellite would be, would be functioning. And this satellite would be deployed at the lower earth orbit at an altitude of 600 kilometers from earth, right? In the lower earth orbit. Now, what is this satellite is supposed to do? This satellite is supposed to basically take images of the Earth's carbon or you can say Earth's forest cover. I hope all of you understand that when you, when you talk about the total forest cover of Earth, it can help us understand how climate change has influenced the total tree cover, the thickness of the stem. You realize that the maximum of the biomass of the tree is stored in the tree's stem. And it will help us to analyze all this carbon content that is present in a tree, its canopy, its entire, uh, you know, shoot system we can easily study. And it will help us not only to uh, monitor this, but also to understand how climate change has affected all these parts of the plant's biomass. So, biomass mission aims to improve our understanding of Earth's carbon balance and the impact of climate change. It is specifically designed to measure these high biomass tropical forest. So high biomass tropical forest, I hope all of you guys know, out of the natural sink, out of the natural sink of carbon, oceans are the biggest natural sink. But after oceans, we have soil and on the soil, 
tropical rainforest happens to be one of the largest carbon sink they happen to trap a lot of carbon so this this particular mission has been developed particularly to to measure the carbon content of the biome uh, of the biomass of the tropical forest by flying for the first time in space a radar operating with an uh, with a 70 cm wavelength so it's basically a radar means radio wave it's basically a radio observatory so this mission is a radio wave observatory a radio wave observatory right and that will be studying the entire forest at a wavelength of 17 cm that means it's a very long wavelength you know uh, of uh, radio wave that are going to be used right it can scan deep through the forest canopy so it can penetrate deep through the forest canopy and that's what the radio waves can do they can pass through thin walls easily so it can scan through the deep forest canopy and collect information on different parts of the plant such as the tree trunk branches and stem where the tree stores most of their carbon that's what i told you previously right and guys it will observe and provide information on the forest height and above ground forest biomass from the space itself this is the first mission of its kind guys and now what is another objective another objective is it will find us it will find out how what is the state of our forest and how they are changing due to climate change there are two phases of this particular mission guys in the first phase a detailed 3d map of the forest of the earth is going to be provided this is important as it is not possible to find out the global biomass of trees from the ground from ground as it is impossible so this will be delivered by in the first phase of the EA, of the european space agency's biomass mission in the second phase it will produce five global maps which will allow forest height and above ground for uh, ground biomass that is to be estimated due to the impact of climate change so firstly it will create a detailed 3d map and then it will create five more maps that will help us to understand how the things are going to change in the future right guys there has been not no study so far which has been performed from space and measures the entire biomass of earth so guys it is due to take off on 29th of april 2025 by using the vega c rocket of european space agency from the koru coast it's called the koru coast of located in french guinea and this from here uh, most of the european space agency launches take place so guys this is what we have under the biomass mission of european space agency and with this we conclude our focus weekly for this week we'll be meeting again next week and uh, after that i'll also be uploading a couple of qip videos right so that is everything for today thank you guys